Welcome to the world of history. Today I will talk about Ines de Castro, also known as the Corpse Queen. Her love story with the future King Pedro I of Portugal has become a romantic legend in the history of that country, highlighting the intensity of their love and the tragic consequences of their forbidden union. Ines de Castro was born between the years 1320 and 1325 in Galicia, in the northwest of present-day Spain. She was the result of an extramarital relationship between her father, Pedro Fernandes de Castro, and the Portuguese noblewoman Aldonza Lorenzo de Valladares. Her father was the illegitimate grandson of Sancho IV, King of Castile, also known as Sancho the Brave. Ines de Castro was a lady-in-waiting to her cousin Constanza Manuel de Valena, daughter of Prince Juan Manuel de Valena and Constanza de Aragon, daughter of the King of Aragon and Valencia. Constanza was a very beautiful and well-educated young woman. In 1336, she was engaged to Prince Pedro, son of King Alfonso IV of Portugal, to solidify ties between the kingdoms of Castile and Portugal, which, at that time, had frequent disputes and had nearly gone to war on more than one occasion. When Constanza was nine years old, she married the King of Castile, Alfonso XI, but due to her young age, the marriage was not consummated. Three years later, the marriage was annulled so that the Castilian king could marry Infanta Maria, daughter of King Alfonso IV of Portugal. Meanwhile, Prince Pedro married Blanca de Castile in 1328, but the marriage was also unconsummated due to the fragile health of the girl. Let's move on to the year 1339 when Constanza Manuel de Valena arrived at the court of Lisbon to marry Prince Pedro, who was 19 years old at the time. Among Constanza's entourage was her cousin Ines, who was described as a very beautiful and elegant young lady, with fair skin, abundant golden hair, and light blue eyes. The moment Prince Pedro saw her, he fell deeply in love with Ines. Nevertheless, on August 24, 1339, he married his betrothed in the Lisbon Cathedral, but immediately began a passionate romance with Ines de Castro, which they kept secret. On April 6, 1342, Constanza gave birth to her first daughter named Maria. In 1344, when Constanza learned of her husband's relationship with Ines de Castro, she tried to separate them. She asked Ines to be the godmother of her newborn son Luis, a request that publicly honored Ines but created a bond of kinship between her and Prince Pedro, making their relationship incestuous. According to the Catholic Church, godparents were considered blood relatives of the family. For obvious reasons, Ines rejected the request and continued her love affair. Unfortunately, Luis died a few days after birth. Although the baptism did not take place, I must say that Ines de Castro and Prince Pedro did share blood ties. Sancho IV, King of Castile, was Ines de Castro's paternal great-grandfather and Prince Pedro's maternal grandfather, as Pedro's mother was a half-sister of Inessa's grandmother, making them second half-cousins. This was one of the reasons why King Alfonso IV was also against this relationship, and in 1344, he decided to exile Ines de Castro to the castle of Albuquerque. Inessa's exile did not pose any obstacle to the lovers, who exchanged letters taken and brought secretly, which further strengthened their love. In October 1345, Constanza gave birth to another son named Fernando. It is said that Constanza died a few weeks later during childbirth. However, other historians mention that she died in 1349, shortly after giving birth to a fourth daughter whom she also named Maria. The most well-known story is that, after Constanza's death in 1345, the heir prince opposed his father's will and ended Inessa's exile, causing a scandal at the court. After Constanza's death, the king quickly sought a young noblewoman for his son Pedro to marry. 
However, the heir prince rejected all proposals and went to live with his beloved Ines at the Quinta de Canadello. In 1346, Ines gave birth to her first son who unfortunately died at birth. The following year, a daughter named Beatrice was born, and in 1349, Ines gave birth to her third son named Juan. Then, the prince and Ines moved to the palace of Santa Clara, away from the court, where she was still unwelcome. The couple was also not well received in Santa Clara, the locals did not approve of them living so close to the convent of Santa Clara, considering them sinful. When a plague affected the surrounding crops, people blamed Ines, saying she had cast an evil eye. In 1351, Pedro asked the Pope to authorize his marriage to Ines because, according to canon law, their degree of kinship prevented them from marrying. His request was denied. Shortly afterward, rumors spread that Pedro had secretly married Ines de Castro in Braganza. He did nothing to silence these rumors. In 1354, the controversial couple's last child was born, named Denisio. At this point, King Alfonso and his advisors were concerned about the future of Portugal. The heir prince had children by two wives, and the Castro family was one of the most powerful in the Kingdom of Castile. Ines de Castro and her family exerted great influence over the prince and did not hide their ambitions to put one of her children on the throne and rule from the shadows over that Iberian kingdom. If Ines de Castro were crowned queen of Portugal, a succession conflict would ensue. Nervousness in the aristocracy and the court spread rumors that Ines and her relatives were conspiring to murder Infante Fernando. King Alfonso IV, who was losing his power, considered his son Pedro's relationship with Ines de Castro as a state matter threatening the future of Portugal. Therefore, in January 1355, the king convened a private council at the castle of Monte Morovello, attended by Diego López Pacheco, Alonso González, and Pedro Coelho, where the king accused Ines de Castro of high treason and ordered her execution. This meeting practically constituted a trial, without the presence of the accused to defend herself. On January 7, 1355, taking advantage of the fact that Prince Pedro was out hunting, the king and his advisors stormed the palace of Santa Clara, where Ines was accompanied by her children. At that moment, Ines realized her fate, she surrounded herself with her children and begged for her life, but the king showed no mercy and ordered her to be murdered. The men stabbed her several times and beheaded her, all in front of her children. When Pedro returned from hunting, he found the terrible scene and immediately knew it was his father's doing. Pedro was consumed by indescribable rage and led a war against his father, backed by Inessa's brothers. For months, the Kingdom of Portugal was plunged into a civil war, which ended when the king and the heir prince agreed to a truce and pledged to forget the past. On May 28, 1357, King Alfonso IV died, and Pedro ascended to the Portuguese throne as Pedro I. The first thing he did was to order the imprisonment of Alonso Gonzalves, Pedro Coelho, and Diego López Pacheco, who had been his father's advisors, but Diego managed to flee the country. The remaining two were publicly tried and found guilty of Inés de Castro's death. After being tortured, Pedro I ordered their hearts to be torn out while they were still alive, to avenge Inessa's death and what they had done to his heart. Some versions suggest that he himself tore out their hearts. This earned him the nicknames of the cruel and the just. On June 12, 1360, Pedro I claimed to have secretly married Ines before the Bishop of Guarda, in a church in Braganza, and requested that she be recognized as Queen of Portugal. With that declaration, he intended to legitimize the children they had conceived together. He sent for the bishop who allegedly officiated the union, but he could not specify the exact date. Nevertheless, the nobles accepted this marriage as valid, but not Pope Innocent VI, so Ines and the now King of Portugal's children had no legitimate right to the throne. But the king was not going to stand idly by. He commissioned the construction of two tombs, and when they were finished, 
between 1360 and 1361, he ordered Inessa's body to be exhumed from where she had been buried, to be transferred to the royal monastery of Alcabeza. According to the legend, widely accepted over the centuries but not conclusively proven, before reburying his beloved's body, Pedro I ordered two thrones to be installed in the Cathedral of Coimbra. Then, Inessa's corpse was placed on one throne, and he sat on the other. Ines was dressed in a coronation robe, adorned with jewels, and crowned with the royal crown. The king insisted that everyone at court should kiss the queen's hand, well, in this case, her bones. After the posthumous coronation ceremony, Ines de Castro's body was moved to the new cemetery, for which the king had ordered everyone to participate in the procession, even children and the sick, and everyone had to carry lit candles. According to Fernão López, a chronicler of the Kingdom of Portugal from the 14th and 15th centuries, he described the funeral procession and recounted that the queen's body was escorted by many horses, nobles, maidens, and clerics, and illuminated by thousands of men along the way. Pedro I died on January 18, 1367, and his son Fernando ascended to the throne as Fernando I. Pedro I was buried in the tomb he had commissioned and ordered to be placed opposite Inessa's, and on both, one can read the phrase, until the end of the world, referring to the fact that, on Judgment Day, their first sight will be of each other. The tombs are in Gothic style made of white marble supported by angels. The king's tomb has a dog at his feet to represent his fidelity. He also ordered a wheel of life to be carved, which shows scenes of his daily life with Ines, the arrival of the assassins, Ines's death, and Pedro's revenge. These tombs are located in the monastery of Alcabeza. Many Portuguese couples visit them on their wedding day to promise eternal fidelity, and young married couples go to them to repeat their vow of loyalty. As a curious fact, there is the legend of the Tears Fountain located where Ines de Castro was murdered. It is said that this fountain arose from Inessa's tears as she agonized and that her body's blood left a stain of reddish seaweed on the rock, visible to this day. Nearby is the Fountain of Love, surrounded by a wooded area, where it is a tradition to hang a ribbon with the name of the loved one. If you visit these places, pay close attention because it is said that you can hear Inessa's crying or see her spirit wandering through the gardens, looking for her beloved. Thank you very much for getting this far. Follow me on my Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram accounts, and if you liked the video, give it a like and share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, and activate the bell so you don't miss any curious and interesting historical facts. Tell me in the comments what you think of the legend of Inessa's posthumous coronation and if you believe she was really a threat to the Kingdom of Portugal. If you made it this far, leave an emoji related to this story. See you soon.